Hi, today we're going to be taking a look at this DeWalt brand 4-way charger. Now, this belongs to someone that my son knows and he asked could I have a look at it and he bought it off someone and he plugged it in and a couple of minutes later I heard a pop and then another pop and then it went, then there was no power to it. But I think I've found the problem without actually taking it apart. So, let's just flip it over and see if you can spot what the problem is. I'll just give you a minute or so. Have you spotted it yet? Well, those people who are in the UK will know this is a standard plug, which is 230 volts, or 240 volts now when you measure it. And if we look here, input 115 volts. So I think this is a sight charger and somebody's put a normal 240 volt plug on it and blew it up. So I'm not going to plug it in to test it because it would be a bit pointless. So what we'll do, we'll start taking it apart and we'll see if we can figure out what the damage is and if we can repair it. So it looks like we need to undo these screws around the outside here. So I'm going to use my Milwaukee drill with a T25 Torx bit. Right, I think that's all of the screws out of it. Let's see if the top comes off. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't look too good straight away, does it? Alright, let's get that out of the way and let's see what we can see. Alright, well it looks like we've got a couple of what look like thermistors or something down here and that one looks exploded. And that one looks exploded. So, looks like a bridge rectifier there. One of these looks like the main switching MOSFET or whatever. I think this is sort of a mirror image. I think there's two power supplies in here. I'll just zoom out a fraction. So it looks like we've actually got two separate chargers. One over here and one over here. And they're just a mirror image of each other. And this is where the mains comes in. And then it splits off to the one on the left and the one on the right. So, I think we're going to have to take these boards out to have a closer look at them. And it looks like they've got some of this yellow gunk over the screw heads. So, I'll see if I can get that out. I found the best way to get this off is to heat it up with a rework station and then you can just kind of just pick away at it. So I think I'll do that. Yeah, I'll probably do for that one. Alright, so we can get these screws out. I'm not sure if there's another screw. This board doesn't really want to budge. Let's see if there's another screw under there. I think it's a plastic clip. So I wonder if there's plastic clips under here as well. Well, they're not making it easy to get into. Right, I'm just going to pause the video a second so I can figure out what's actually holding this board in. A few moments later. Right, well that was a bit of a nightmare. So, there's some silicon, there's some clips here with some silicon around. Here, here, and there's another one. Just hidden. Just down there. You can just see it. Just down here. 
and you've also got to remove all of the silicon around these posts and then that allows the board to slide that way and then you can remove it so if anybody else has got one of these and you need to take the board out now you know how right. spin this board over and we'll move it along a bit so it looks like the power comes in on these two pins here and then it looks like we've got a small fuse here so let's see if that's intact first let's try and get the meter in shot let's untangle my probes a second right so right so the fuse is blown that's the first thing which I kind of would have expected seeing how black that Verista is so we've got a short across here well not short but we've got about 120 ohms or so So that that varista is about here. Tell you what, let's just check that bridge rectifier. Yeah, right. So let's go that way. Right, so the bridge rectifier is fine, and the way to test these is, so this must be the negative here, and if we've got AC coming into here, you can see it goes through that diode to the negative, if we've got AC coming in here, you can see it goes there, so this should be the positive, so if we go on the AC in, normally when these blow, the blow short circuits, so when you are measuring from the AC pins to one of the outputs here you will get something like that so so the bridge rectifier is fine let's see where we go next then well, I can't see quite what's under here I mean, that looks a bit like a footprint of a transistor there but it might not be this one looks like a one and we haven't got any shorts there it looks like we've got a short from there to there but I can't quite see what that is kind of underneath all of this silicon here so I might have to remove that aye that must be a diode so that looks okay I mean, that might well be a link. I think we might have to remove that bit of silicon just to see what's under there. But I'm quite hopeful that this is actually going to be okay. And it's just that Verista that's blown. Let's see if we can pick away a bit more of this silicon. So I started picking away at the silicon at this side and I noticed you can actually see the components down this side and I think that's another thermistor so that would measure very low resistance so that's uh, probably okay. Right so I think we need a varista for here, a varista for here and 
two of these small fuses down there. Right, I thought I'd better take the other board out before I order any components, just to see if we need anything extra for this one. So I've picked away the silicon and undone the screws. Right, so if I flip this board over, let's just test some things again then. Right, so the power comes in on these two pins here. It goes through a bit filtering. Through that varista that's burned out, which is about here. So I think we'll start by checking the bridge rectifier again. So right, so that diode's okay, and that one's okay. So now if I put the negative lead on here, that one's okay. Now that one's okay. So bridge rectifier is okay. Let's just check this transistor here, which is the main switching transistor, I think. Yeah, that seems all right. And then I think there's a diode here. That seems okay as well. So it looks like same problems as on this board. Needs a new varista and a new fuse by the look of it. Right, I'll get those ordered up and then we'll fit them when they arrive. Well, the new parts have arrived. I've already removed the old Verista from this side and the old fuse. So we'll put those in first and then we'll look at the other side. Right, we'll get this fuse popped in. Just might have to clean a bit of that glue away here. There we go. Verista in now. That should be that side done. Right, so I still need to remove the fuse on this one. Let's try and get past some of this conformal coating. Let's put a bit of IPA on here. actually seem as much on this side of the board. There was more on the other side. Right, there's the old one out. Just gonna put a bit of fresh solder on here a second. Solder sucker on that instead. I'm just going to trim the legs down a little bit on this one. Right, so I need to get the old Verista out now. Right, I'm going to pick away at some of the silicon on this side still. Right, I'm just going to vacuum this lot up a bit. Right, so hopefully that should be it. Right, now we just need to plug it in and give it a test. <laughs> Actually, we don't need to plug it in. 
because what we need to do is cut this 240 volt plug off and put a 110 volt plug on and then plug it into a side transformer because if we just plug it in the way it is it's just going to blow up again so we best not do that I think I'll just chop this plug off be easier oh, you know what I forgot to do didn't you how many times have you done that forgot to put the sort of the thing on the cable first Right, I shall go get a side transformer and then I'll be back. Right, back with a side transformer. So some of you might be wondering you know, why why use a, a side transformer? You know what, what's the purpose of it? Well, it takes the mains voltage from here, reduces it down to 110, but it's a little bit more cleverer than that because the 110 is actually centre tapped to earth. So what happens is if let's say you know we touched a live part in here between the live part and earth is only 55 volts so you wouldn't get as much of a shock as what you would if it was plugged into mains because then you'd get a 240 volt shock so if this is live and we touch some live component if it's plugged into the side transformer between the live part and ground is only 55 volts if you touch both both the two lives in effect then you would get a 110 volt shock which would be half of what you would get if you had a 240 volt one but normally like you say if you just you know if it was a bare wire or you touched a live part you would only get a 55 volt shock instead so it's a lot safer right let's plug this in and let's see what happens well there's the transformer on Let's check. I've got these parts out of the way. Right, well, I've got some power lights came on there, so that's a good sign. So I think what I'll do next, we'll put the top on, we'll put the battery clips and that in place, and then we'll see if we can charge a battery up with it. Right, eventually got the top back on. Just the screws to go in now. Now just spin that round. Plug the power in. Alright, we'll grab a battery, we'll try this side first. Alright, so that one's charging. This one, yeah. It's a bit hard to get in and out of these batteries. Right then, I think that's it. All working. I'll just unplug this a second. Right then, all fixed. Right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.